a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future, all belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. He, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? or who may stand in his holy place. He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. Then when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For the astonishment of the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those who were with him. Likewise, James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought in their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord.
when I was meditating on this, the one thing that hit me the most was when Simon Peter saw what the Lord had done through you know, the catch by following him, he fell to his knees and said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And you know, this is true of all of us who God chooses to work for. We see God, you know, maybe we could say something that helps turn someone around. Uh, maybe we could supply needs to someone who's in need. Maybe we could just encourage that person who is broken and hurting. You know, God uses us, and he longs to use us. But if we're really honest, we know that although we may have gifts that he's given us and we need to acknowledge them, it ultimately is him. And we are just poor, sinful people who by grace are being able to use by God to do marvelous things. And, you know, it it's, comes out in the, the first reading, you know, Paul says, you know, do not be wise in the world. And I think this is one of the problems, you know, we have. When we look at holiness, when we look at, you know, following the Lord, we think of the, these great deeds and we're thinking of people like, um, you know, Teresa of Calcutta or, or Jane, a song, um, Saint uh, Pope John Paul II, or even the, the saint we're acknowledging today, uh, Gregory the Great, and we think, what great things they did. And, and they did do great things. Um, and I was reading about some of the things that Gregory did. I mean, it was under him that the papacy became the de facto ruler of Rome because the actual ruler of Rome were over in Constantinople and didn't give a hoot. Um, and how he cared for the poor and how he touched many lives and how he reformed music. Yet, when you read his writings, he always says that, I am poor and wretched. You know, he knew his weakness, he knew his sin, he knew how he was utterly dependent upon the Lord. And I think we need to rejoice in that. We need to rejoice in the fact that it isn't so much our gifts, be they great or be they small, but it's when we turn them over to the Lord and when we listen to him and when he tells us to do something that might not seem quite sensible, like go out into the deep. If we do that, we can expect a great harvest because we are working not in our own power, but in the power of God. And that is what's going to transform the world around us. May Jesus Christ be praised.